Hello, I'm Marcello Rolando, the Reasonable Voice, thanking you for joining us and becoming one of the Reasonable Voices heard round the world. Did our backstory foreshadow Trump Pence? Our backstory. Arguably, more female and younger voters vote left of center and, to varying degrees, desire to center America on the central ideas of the Gettysburg Address, Voting Rights Act in its original form, and, on our most emancipated days, the Equal Rights Amendment. However, we need stop squabbling like jealous siblings failing to comprehend the wisdom of Solomon before we cut the baby in half. Notwithstanding Abraham Lincoln, a Whig until the Whig party evaporated, when he adopted the newest rising political label, Republican, but in all due respect, if Teddy Roosevelt couldn't do it, third-party candidates are not likely to become president until we, the grassroots, stop fighting over the soil and replace our two-party system with a more pragmatic democratic alternative, capable of sustaining itself without our over-consumerism and the final financial corruption of too-big-to-jail Wall Street. Our penchant for labeling everything from hurricanes to wars, to denigrating pigmentation, lifestyle choices, and economic status, separating us from Moral Monday's mindset, and delivering us into the wilderness state where those who use flag and Bible as props for what they preach about church, sex, and state greed drain our reason. Of course, Democrats have not always been the good guys, but with 2020 vision in 2018, they are the better choice, especially if female, to progress America forward if we manage to mute Blue Wave and plan and think beyond Pence as well as Trump. Realizing impeaching Donald Trump rolls out the red mapping carpet for a President Mike Pence, the real constitutional crisis is, one, those who don't vote. Two, those who possess too little curiosity to vote with sufficient clarity of outcome. And three, those dividing Democrats into liberals and progressives. A categorically pointless, self-mutilating nose from face tantrum. Perfection is America's motivating dream, but ensemble invites solution. We can save our culturally diverse heritage, or we can succumb to the infestation of us against them. Now for our foreshadowing. Are we willing to make how we treat each other a disgusting contest to win rock bottom? Proving anyone's character and patriotism ranks higher than a Nunes, Gowdy, or Peter King is as easy as emulating Republicans Rod J. Rosenstein, Robert Mueller, and Democrats Leslie Coburn and Abigail Spanberger. Listen, we can parrot media's constitutional crisis or get involved in a system long overdue for correcting itself. We can save our 2020 census from gerrymandering by painting America's red, white, and blue a rainbow enhanced by brown, black, and yellow. We can crush student loan borrowers, embrace implausible deniability of $30 million check, and rape our environment, or we can elect and, if need be, unelect. Candidates who void agenda of Mick Mulvaney, Citizens United, and Scott Pruitt, but continuing to extremely swing our political pendulum every two to six years needs to cease and desist. Not condoning Guantanamo waterboarding or oiling the turnstile between minority high schools and prisons for profit is a drastically low bar, which by comparison might cajole some into thinking themselves morally superior on Facebook. But to whatever degree we behave like what we abhor, we become another Kelly Sadler comrade. We either propagate access Hollywood's genitalia potus vulgarity or auto-reject Keith Davidson's sexual assistance, Michael Hayden's Gina Haspel, and begin anew to embody Thurgood Marshall's Brown versus Board of Education. We can choose Senator Grassley's rush to misjudgment, Mitch McConnell's young conservative Republicans bench lineup, even as Greenberg Traurig celebrates Comey's departure anniversary by kicking Trump's sidekick to the curb, or recommit to a Statue of Liberty-approved land of the free. We can sit on our hands and choose to sacrifice our voting privileges on the altar of billionaire finance manipulative marketing to maintain perceived privilege, status, and power, 
or be another generation making mothers and fathers happy they colluded with sex. Our actions, especially how we revere days like Mother's Day, define us, lovingly respecting all mothers, honoring all women, especially teachers, rejuvenating hope in parents who've lost children to drive-bys, high school military recruitment without parental permission, private prisons, addiction, food poisoning, flint water, gun violence, and lack of quality education. Such things have no more place in a home of the brave than military deferments dishonestly acquired. Yes, for we Caucasian males, our founding fathers did exceptionally well. But it's up to all of us to keep it, knowing being a living example of the golden rule is the only light that diminishes tower darkness. Thank you, and join us. Become one of the reasonable voices heard round the world.